this this stuff here, I mean, I just, I'm actually, you know what? I'm just happy to yeah, bring it to thank people. Thank you. It's all I'm, focused now. I'm happy to bring it to the world. I'm, I'm just like, wow, this is fantastic. What an opportunity. I'll, I'm so happy to have this chance. It's like we worked so hard to make it, and now, I mean, Cora's given us a great, great opportunity. Well, I'm glad you, you're here, and I'm glad that you will make 15 minutes of time for this interview. Whatever because you need. Whatever you there need. are all people waiting for, no, no, for more okay. music. Don't worry about it. Um, but, uh, well, Mr. Mark Levinson. Just Mark is fine. Mark is fine. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's for, for the people that are watching this, uh, this interview. Well, I don't think you really need an introduction, but it could be nice if you could tell something about the new <coughs> company, Daniel Hertz, and what your role is and what your uh, idea was when you launched a new company. Well, in the past, I made audio products with the technology that was available because you couldn't buy anything else, right? We use the transistors or the chips, the capacitors, whatever we could get. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we did our best, um, you know, to be creative and innovative and, um, you know, make the best products that we could. But with Daniel Hertz, we're actually developing new technology, new semiconductors, firmware, software, electronic architecture and speakers. Yeah. And so it's actually going out of the box. The most out of the box part of Daniel Hertz is C-Wave technology. Yes. We're the only company that can explain, measure, and fix the digital audio problem, and we have a patent on the solution. And that is a big deal, as you know. That's, 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 that's really a serious development mm -hmm. with a lot of implications. I mean, it's not a simple thing. That's a big deal. But the rest of it is also uh, profound. It's just coming into the world. This is the first event, yes. the first public event we've ever had for Daniel Hertz. Yes. We're doing it here. You're, you're actually make, you're doing one of the very first interviews in the world on Daniel Hertz, you know, in person, uh, yes. live event. So I really we really appreciate it. Um, it's actually a big story. Uh, it's not about a preamp or a power amp or a speaker or a cable. It's it's a whole different thing. We're music people. We're musicians. We're music lovers, and we make equipment for music people and music yeah. lovers like you. And you know, it's not about electrical appliances and an industry and uh, marketing. You know, it's 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 much more on the artisan level. Yes. It, and uh, you, you can feel that, and as people yeah, feel that. Yeah, you strike me as a man that wants to prove stuff, no bullshit, so to say. I have to edit that out, otherwise YouTube will be angry, but, uh, and a man of science. But you said most hi-fi is actually 50% science and 50% listening. Well, it should be. Yes. But in my opinion, most audio is not very scientific and has very little art. It has become a world of how to make money for music lovers, how yep. to get them to spend money. It's a, a, a world of disappointment. It's all about, well, you'd be happy if you bought this, if mm -hmm. you upgraded that, if you had one of these, if you, you know, and oh, okay, okay, so people keep spending the money, but they never get anywhere. Yeah. And it's this, it's turned into this world of how to make money for music lovers. Mm -hmm. Now, our approach is different. What we would like to do is give people an opportunity to have a music system that they don't have to change, don't have to upgrade. They can just, it's like a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. If you get a great piano, let's say you look for a piano. You say, you know what? I really want a nice piano. Let's go get a nice piano. So you go look at pianos. You look at Steinway, Bergendorfer, Beckstein, you might look at a Yamaha, you might look at a Fazioli. Mm -hmm. And the one that you like and you can afford, you get that one. Yeah. And then that's it. And you, yeah. You're not going to trade it <laughs> in and upgrade. for decades. <laughs> you're going to enjoy it. The same yeah. thing with a guitar or, yeah. or, or, or a violin or, or, or a trumpet. You, you get something you love and you keep it. Yeah. Right? I got my bass in 1966. 
and I have the same base. Yeah. Right? It's why I change it. If you love it, get something you love. If you don't love it, don't get it. Buy, <laughs> buy, buy something you don't love. If you love it, get it. Yeah. And, you know, keep it simple. And so we make products for people who kind of feel like that. And so far, it seems to be working. There's almost no Daniel Hertz in the used market. Nobody wants to sell it. No, it's true. And, and, but that's, you know, um, we're not for everyone. We're not really for, uh, we're not trying to, basically, we're not even trying to sell them. <laughs> Our big problem is making them. We, we're yeah, back ordered. That. We're back ordered. Yeah. And they, people are waiting months to get our product. Well, I guess the best way of marketing is that people will tell other enthusiasts how good it is. And that's right. Then you have to make a good product in the first place. Right. And well, that's true. I mean, again, the first thing is honesty. Yeah, true. And, and the second thing is caring. You mm -hmm. have to care. I mean, there's people, so many companies in this industry that really, what they really care about the most is just profits. Whatever it takes to make the profits, that's what they do. Yeah. To me, that's not, I mean, music is not about that. That's not what music's about. And, but it's okay. I mean, look, it's an industry. It's become you that way. You have to make money. Yes. In however, way. however, <clears throat> I hope that Daniel Hertz will make it possible mm -hmm. for people in the audio field to develop their, their, their businesses in a way that's more based on honesty and enjoyment and um, enthusiasm, you know, than schemes, <laughs> you know, how to make money. Well, your, your music demo told me enough that this is not an average product. And uh, I think the people would be very interested in um, an explanation of what it actually is, because it's built in here. Yep. Z-Wave technology? Well, Z-Wave is an algorithm yes. that's embedded in the software suite, which is inside the chip. Yeah. So the Mighty Cat chip is a little brain yeah. that's in there. And that brain is doing the work of converting digital line-level signals to analog power out. Yeah. And then there's a then there's output stage and power supply course, circuitry. Yes. Yeah. There's basically two boards. There's one one board is the input connectors and all the input circuitry, yeah. including the headphone amplifier. And then the other block is the power supply and the output stage. Yeah. So if you have a screwdriver, you can basically it's a it's like a Lego. You can <laughs> just take it apart with the screwdriver. It's a couple of it's very simple. Uh, well, it's not very simple. <laughs> well, it's simple. <laughs> In the sense that you don't touch transistors or capacitors no. or anything, you no. got you know these it's two main boards. Yeah. Um, um, but to get the best performance from the chip requires yeah. architecture. Yes. And the audio architecture here is very sophisticated, um, so that basically you can do whatever you want to. If you have an analog source like a turn, like a phono preamp or a cassette deck or a tape. That you can get the best sound possible from that analog source. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of so-called analog sources actually are playing digitally mastered material. True. So they're basically just CDs anyway. Yes. And C-Wave will fix them. So yeah, what, because when they, the, 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 sorry, I was interrupting. So let's say you're playing a digitally mastered LP. Yeah. It'll go through the A to D conversion, which is super high performance, get, get C-Wave processed, and then, so yeah. what you're hearing is basically like analog. Because you investigated the effect of digital sources on the human brain. We studied the effects of PCM digital audio yeah. on human physiology. Yes. Okay. And it was astonishing. You can see the test results. And there are, for example, green rectangles, mm -hmm. red rectangles, and blue rectangles. The green rectangles are people in a room, same time, same place, with no music. They're just yeah. sitting there, and we test them sitting there with no music. That was your test group. Then 
Yeah. We test the listening to digital, a digital audio recording. Yeah. And then we test them listening to the same recording, the same device, the same everything, just see wave processed. Okay. And we test them for central nervous system function, kidney function, and liver function. Yeah. So there's four people, one, two, three, four, for example, and each one of them tested for these three things under these three conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the green rectangles, you'll see they test not perfect health, but, you know, they're not terrible. It's okay. With, when people are listening to, the, to a digital recording, the tests become terrible. Mm. They're awful. They're not a little bit worse. They're terrible. And when they listen to the same recording with C-Wave processing, they test better than with no music. It's like listening to music makes you stronger. Well, it should. You want it to. Yeah. You want it to. But you, it won't if it's PCM processed. That's bizarre. Okay. So here, test person one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Green rectangles are yep. no music. Red rectangles are listening to a digital recording. And blue rectangles are listening to the same digital yeah. recording at exactly the same level, zero dB difference, no condition different, just exactly the same thing. The ideal measurement is mm -hmm. 51, 52, 53, low 50s is considered the, the goal. That's, that's in balance. So here we have three tests. The first one is uh, central nervous system function, mm -hmm. uh, liver function, and kidney function. Yeah. And you'll see 60s, 70s, that's pretty much, that's not terrible. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Second one. Yep. 70s, 80s, okay, not terrible. Again here, 60s, 70s, and here, 60s, uh, yeah, 80s. It's not terrible. Yeah. What you don't want is less than 50. Okay, that's, if you go down, it's bad. That's the worst. You okay. Don't, less than 50 means you better be careful. You're going, it's predictive. It doesn't say you're sick, but it says sort of where you're going. Mm -hmm. And it's to be able to find out where you're going so you do something about it before you really get sick. Yes. So yeah. now, let's go to the red rectangles. Okay. 0 0.9. Wow. No, Two. no, no. One, four, 40. Oh, okay. Drop. 14, yeah. 44, 40. Okay. So here, okay. all below yeah. 50. Yeah. Did, yeah. Did, except this one is 91. But look at this. They're terrible. 40, 40. They're terrible. 30, 40. Yeah. What the hell happened here? They're much worse than no music. Yeah. All of them. All of them are way worse than no music at all. Now, let's go to the, the C Wave process tracks. Yeah, 50, it's perfectly around 50. 50, 50, yeah. Hello. It works. Hello, everybody. Where, where do you see? I mean, this is what we want. You we must want... have been very happy when that happened. <laughs> well, and a little surprised. Yeah. But that level of consistency, boom, boom, boom. Yes. So, and a doctor did testing of 50 people informally and got the same results I did. Okay. So this is not just for people. It's validated. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, we could do a controlled test with 500 people and blah, blah. But it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't get that level of consistency otherwise. That's why we have a patent. This is what's called objective. Subjective is, I like this, you like that, I think this, you think that. That's subjective, okay, but... Objective means, like, is gravity. Is, I let go, Does it? Is it my opinion that it's gonna drop? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> it's going to drop, right? That's all yeah. I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now we have objective tests. Hard science. That show what PCM digital audio does to people. But how did you fix it? Okay. That is that was done by creating a finely tuned reverb algorithm. And what that does, in pure analog, you have a continuous waveform like yes. this. Well, it's like PCM digital is a sampled non-continuous waveform. 
So we have a sample, a sample, a sample, right? Yeah. That's how we look. Okay. So what Berwin discovered is that with a very finely tuned reverb algorithm, we can extend the samples. In time. Well, what does reverb do? It takes yeah. an impulse and makes... Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're making the samples a little bit longer, but it's so finely tuned that it's almost inaudible. Mm -hmm. It's like when you make a digital copy of an analog tape, you want to put back what's missing, the yeah. low-level ambience and detail that's missing because the, uh, the space is there. Yeah. That's all it is. It's putting back what's missing. It's putting back that low-level ambience and detail, which is what is missing. So you... That's, and then the brain doesn't get stressed out. It feels... It's like it's filled in the gaps. Yes, that's all it's doing. But it, it's a real art to do that. I invited three mastering engineers to help me because mastering engineers are a breed of people that, I mean, they used to do this all the time. Yeah. I'm a mastering engineer, but there are people who just, that's what, they just do that. And I thought, so I asked them, would yeah. you help me? Uh, Ted Jensen in Nashville, Tim Jenner in California, and Bert van der Wolf in Holland. Mm -hmm. Bert is probably the world's leading expert in high-res recording. He records mainly in 32-bit, uh, uh, 384 or something. 24192 to him is like MP3. I mean, <laughs> he, he, he lives up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ted Jensen is a superstar, a U.S. mastering engineer. Tim Jenner does a, a lot, did a lot of work for Mobile Fidelity and other well-known companies, and he's a composer as well. These guys really have great ears. And they gave us quotes. Cool. Tim, uh, I asked them, what would you suggest? How could we work together? So Tim said, well, I have a piece that I composed. I know every millisecond of it because I composed it. It's a mixture of electronic music and acoustic instruments, and he played them. Yeah. So he knew it. Every, knew, knew it. Yeah. So, so, he, so one of the things he did was he sent me the original 176K version mm -hmm. and an MP3 version. And he said, okay, give me a C wave of the mm. MP3, that's, which I did. That's a hard and, test. And he wrote back and he said, wow, yeah. it sounds almost the same as the 176. <laughs> and he said, how did you do that? And we sort of went on from there. Yeah. And uh, Bert said it, make, it made his recordings sound more real. Yeah. Without C-Wave, it was like watching a good video picture of something. Yeah. But with the C-Wave, it was like watching the real thing. Wow. That's quite a compliment. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's about that stress. You yeah. know, it's like, see? So it's very subtle, but not subtle. And <clears throat> I mean, the, again, like we said, 50% 50% art. Um, I won't say that C-Wave is perfect. I don't know if it is. That's for people to decide. The yep. world will decide. How good is it? I don't know. I did my best. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that so far, everybody loves it. We have no negatives. Nobody has criticized it. Nobody has not liked it. So far, we've sold Masterclass software since 2014. Nobody's yep. returned it. Everybody loves what it does. But, I, you know, maybe somebody will think of something better someday. Who knows? Right now, I don't see it coming. Uh, the most important thing is to make the world of audio healthier. People need health. Yes. Right? We need, you know, taking care of human health, wellness. And it's not just about physical wellness, it's about positive energy and credibility. The, the real problems of PCM have not been studied yet. Mm -hmm. And I have not talked about them because they're not proven and with data, but 
I will say that there is a connection between PCM digital audio and negativity that the doctor discovered, the doctor who I mentioned discovered. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about it because there's no material to support anything I'm saying. Yes. So I'll just say that it's, a hunch. it's something that has to be looked into. Yeah. But so far, no audio company has done any testing on anyone for health. It just, if it, if it has low distortion and flat frequency response and blah, 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 sell it. <laughs> and there's no real th thinking about the human element. No. So we're the first company that's really caring about that. And there's work to be done. Yes. There's, we, you know, we have work to do, studies. Maybe other people will you know, do it uh, in their own way, it, it, whatever. But anyway, we're creating awareness. And we are... Um, it's really needed. Yeah. And we're coming up with an alternative mm -hmm. universe, in a sense. We're saying there's a place for excellence in music reproduction, but we feel that um, we can do better with new technology and new approaches. And so we're, we're, we're here to uh, introduce them and see what people think, you know, bring it to market. Um, and we're not saying that they're perfect, but they're the best we can do. And um, Well, I you know, think it's... Uh a very good first approach. <laughs> very yeah. good. Well, what I like, you know, when I was a kid, most people did not have audio systems. No. That was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. I was 10 years old in 1956. 19, okay? 1956, not many people had audio systems. Well, and my family didn't have a lot of money, but my dad and my bought an amplifier, a Scott, you know, H.H. Yeah. Scott, little 12-watt yeah. per channel amplifier. And so we plugged the turntable into it and connected it up to a mono speaker. Mm -hmm. that somebody built a wooden box and put a driver in it. And that was the audio system, right? And so what was it? Well, it was a box and the turntable plugged in and the speaker on the other side. Yeah. And, you, and that was fine. What the hell was wrong with it? Nobody cared. It was fine. No. We loved it. Well, that's what this is. It's a box with volume control on it. And you put a source in and connect it to speakers. And, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, well, it's... I love minimalism. I noticed. You know, <laughs> um, complexity is fine if that's what's needed. Symphony orchestras, well, they're complex, but they have to be because you have all yeah. these different instruments and the compositions, and okay, that's fine. And But when it comes to audio, um, I look at the audio world today and I think... What a mess! What a mess! This is a, this is this is out of out of control. What's happening here? So, uh, but it's not that I want. I'm not trying to make anybody wrong. Uh, there are a lot of good people in this field doing their best, mm -hmm. and all I'm trying to do is say, hey, we, we, maybe we could do better. We have some opportunity here, to you know, to advance things, and um, you know, th the idea here is is to try to make things better. That's all. I think that's a perfect way to let the other people in again. Thank you Thank so you much. very much for Thank your you. time. Thanks for yours. Great. Yes.